all your lovely comments and where you're from. Uh, Welcome to the All Brand Show. Hey, Veronica from Alabama. Hey, D. Clark from Orange, California. Barbara Jones. It's dark and rainy. Shucks. <laughs> Donna from Rockport, Texas. Hey. Annette from Mississippi, but visiting in Georgia. Sounds fun. Gail from Vancouver, Washington. How exciting. And Judy from Alabama, how wonderful. It's so great to see you. I am so excited about our show today because we have one of my favorite people in the world. Her name is Cindy Hogan. She's from, she's actually a brother ambassador. She has a company called Cynthia's Embroidery. She is phenomenal. She is a guru. Today we're going to be talking about the tubular arm embroidery machine, the Brother Persona PRS 100, and hard to hoop items. We're going to talk about cutting, applique on the scan and cut, eye embroidery, canvas workspace, and if we have time, simply applique and more. So I hope you enjoy the show. And let's bring in Cindy Hogan. Hey, Barbara. Hey. Welcome. How are, How are you? you doing? Excellent. And you? Me too. Me too. It's kind of a off rainy day here off and on <laughs> yeah <laughs> a good day to be in doing crafts and watching videos right <laughs> yeah excellent day to do lives <laughs> oh i forgot to mention everybody stay tuned through the end of this broadcast because we will be giving away a 100 dollars allbrands.com e-gift card to one lucky watcher on facebook or youtube so how do you get in the running just like comment and share or subscribe if you're watching on Facebook, please subscribe for future notifications and uh, YouTube as well. So good luck. And darn it, I don't get to win. Oh, you win every day <laughs> <laughs> because you work for with brother as an ambassador. So you've already won. That is true. <laughs> you have the best, There's a few perks with that. <laughs> the best studio ever. And you just get to play. <laughs> so exciting. And guess what? I'm super excited because allbrands.com is teaming up with Brother and we are going to be hosting the Brother booth at the Houston International Quilt Festival this year. Yes, it is here. Back again, back to normal. We're so excited. That's going to be October 28th through the 31st. Please register and we're so super excited excited for that. And Cindy's going to be there. Yes. And I am so glad that we get to go back together because we have so much fun at that show. It is a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot just of work, like, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it goes by so fast because it's so exciting. It really does. It really <laughs> does. And we get to see everybody. And so it, I'm so excited to get back into in-person events as well. Yeah. I mean, the lives have been great, but it's time to see people. Yeah. And we will still continue doing live, so don't worry about that. But we're excited to be doing uh, in person as well, too. So that's so exciting. So what do we have today on the agenda? We are going to start with the persona and how to get a design file to be read as an applique on a Scan and Cut DX machine. This I is wanna... really exciting because I knew about this and then I forgot about it. And then you reminded me about it. And I was like, yes, there is a way to do this. I'm so there excited. is indeed a way. And the nice part about it is the DX machines that the dealers sell actually read our PES files, our PHC files and our PHX files. So by that, I mean, whatever machine, whatever format your embroidery machine that's a brother saves out of, can be read on the DX models. The scan and cut. Yes. yes. That's so exciting. I love that. So me too. I uh, me too. It just <laughs> makes a huge difference. Yeah. And it makes it tons easier. So shall we get started at my persona? Oh, sure. At your personal persona. Yes. My personal persona. Yes. So <laughs> hold on. Let me flitch cameras here. <laughs> And we are actually on the wrong camera. We forgot to check that before we left. There we go. <laughs> Here we go. All right. I'm excited. And pardon me for walking in front of the screen, but I don't have a choice. <laughs> if I try to go any other direction, I'm going to trip over a cable. Okay. So I have an embroidery. Oh, hello. 
Like I said, I can trip over anything. There are five cameras in this room right now. <laughs> can you still hear me? L loud and clear. Okay, good. So I've got my design loaded on my USB stick and I'm going on the persona here. I'm going to touch the USB. Well, it's telling me it's not loaded because I jiggled it. Let's pop it back in there and make it read it. There we go. And I have on here a little flamingo and that's the one we're going to look at right now. And we're going to set it onto the screen. So do we want to add any text to this? How about we do something like summer fun? So to add text to the design, we're going to go in here and choose add and pick one of our fonts. You have quite a few fonts that you can select from. There are two pages. The hey, second Cindy. Yes. Let's tell the watching audience what they might want to have as a text on the flamingo. How does that, that would be lovely? All right. So if anybody has a fun saying to put next to the flamingo, chime in in the comments, please. So we have different options on your second page. These are small fonts that are great for monogramming, call your cuffs and stuff. Anything that you need teeny tiny text, great for quilt labels, just giving you that little information there. And these are your um, Cyrillic fonts. I had to think of the name of it. So let's go back to the first page and I'm going to pick a fun font for this one. How about we choose this guy right here? Any ideas for our text yet? <laughs> One says, don't make me put my foot down. That might be a little bit too much text, right? Yeah, that's more than I want to put on here. <laughs> oh, here's, a a cute bag. here's a cute one from Veronica Williams. Fun in the sun. How about All right. that? That works. So how about we do this in two lines? So I'm going to do fun. Gotta, oh, wait a minute. Let's delete that one and go to lowercase letters. So I don't get quite so big fun space. You have everything on here. This is your space. And I didn't size this to begin with just because I know that I want to size it later. You have large, medium and small, but it only does the letter that you're working on unless you do it at the very beginning. And I never think of it till after or I'm done. So just so you know, you're not set in stone in the size that you select when you begin. Cindy said something really cute. Uh, Cindy. <laughs> okay. What was that? She said, Let's flamingle. <laughs> oh, I actually like that one better. Flamingo. They're all good. It's so hard to choose. <laughs> I, and let's do that one. Okay. Just simply because it's smaller. <laughs> okay. Very cute. And Priscilla says, let's flamingo. <laughs> Very cute, Priscilla. I love it. Really good comments. All right. I need an apostrophe. So let's come over here to our punctuation marks. And I believe that's my apostrophe. Yep. There we go. Let's. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and set that one. I could press enter to go to the next line, but I want to make sure that they're further apart. So let's just go ahead and set that one. And we will add another. Actually, yep. Let's just go ahead and add another, the same one. And let's see here. F. All right. So now I have two lines of text. They're sitting on top of each other. So I'll move one out of the way. Let's move this one up. Now, as I said, I'm not totally done with this now. If I want to, I can array the text over the top of it directly here on the machine. Kind of like that. How about you? Oh, that's so fun. And then let's size these guys. So as I said, you're not done once you press set, you still have the size option. And, and I'm amazed resize it. How, how much it actually goes up and down in sizing on the letters. It's, and it 
It's yeah, and you can distort it too if you want. So if you wanted it taller than wide, you can always distort. When you're ready, touch OK. So let's see here. I'm in metric. Let me change to inches to make sure that the frame that I've selected is going to work for us. I went into my settings here. We'll touch OK. And it looks like we are within the parameters of the hoop that I've selected. So that's good. That's always a really good thing. All right, now we want to color code this so that our scan and cut can recognize it. What do I mean by color coding? I mean, let's just simply change the color of the pieces that we want to cut on the scan and cut machine to applique material. So if right I do, we're, not, we're not on the scan and cut. We're on an embroidery machine. Right. We're working with an embroidery file. Yes. And we, ju we just want our scan and cut to be able to read this as a cut file. So what we want to do is hunt for the color that we want it to cut. Oh, there it is. So if you look here, that is a little bitty piece of flamingo and you can see it on my screen. It doesn't look like you can see it on yours, but you can see it on mine. We're going to touch the scissors. That is our color applique material. And it will tell you applique material. You do have to have the brother thread palette selected. Okay. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll show you that in just a minute. We're going to fast forward here to the next color that we want it to cut, which would be my beak. Going to change that to applique material as well. And that's the little scissor icon at the bottom. Yep. That is the scissor option. icon. That's what I call color coding because this is your thread palette and that is considered an actual color applique material. So then doing that will make your scan and cut be able to read that as a cut file when you put it in the scan and cut. Yes, you can use the badge function instead of the embroidery lines function and it will give you the exact size that you want. Instead of embroidery lines, you kind of have to figure out which piece it is you want. This will only read those two that I color coded. So now we're going to touch embroidery and we are going to touch memory. And we're going to save it to our USB stick that we have. All right. Now we're ready to go over to our scan and cut. You ready? So we're going to take this same design and go over to the scan and cut. All right. So now I'm going to put my USB in the side of my scan and cut machine. And let's make it active again. And let me switch cameras here so you can see right up close and personal what we're doing. We are going to choose retrieve data because that is where our design is located. It's in the retrieve data. You're pulling something up. Either you saved on your machine, you've transferred from Canvas Workspace on your USB device, or you've transferred directly from your computer if you have direct connected to your computer. You want me to back up and show you that retrieve data button again since your the thing was on it? There it is down at the bottom, retrieve data. We are on the SDX 230D, okay? You're, we're touching USB and it will be in your B pocket. So all designs that are saved out from the machine go to our B pocket. There's my design, we'll touch that. And let me show you what I mean by color coding. If I touch this one, if my design has not been assigned the colors applique material, if I touch the that button right there, that is the embroidery lines button. If I touch OK, you'll notice it gives me all of the data. If I touch the color breakdown, it will break down into the different colors. But that's kind of confusing to try to figure out what exactly do you want it to cut? Which side do you want it to cut? Is that appropriate? That's why if you color code it, it is so simple. There you go. I have two pieces. I have the, the um, flamingo body and I have my beak. So let's go ahead and touch the flamingo body and touch OK and touch set. I created this design in Simply Applique and the way I created it, I don't need to add any extra to it. We're going to choose add and I'm going to go ahead and choose the beak and touch OK. We'll set that. Once again, I don't need to change anything. So now let's put our fabric on our mat. I am, 
I've got my, my I've got a lot of stuff over here. I didn't think this through. All right, so I have my standard map. Everybody see that? The purple line tells me it's my standard map. That means it has a medium amount of tack. It's not my heavy tack fabric map. We are going to place both of our fabrics on here because they are both cotton of the same weight and they both have the same backing applied to them. So we are cutting fabric with a backing on it first. We'll cut fabric without a backing in a minute, but for this one, we're gonna go with a backing. And you'll notice I have holes in my design, in my fabric. I'm not worried about that because I have the amazing scanner built into my machine. So my fabrics are on. I peeled the back off of my fabrics so that paper, the paper backing, oops, I don't want to be there. I've got a bad spot on my mat. I loaned somebody a mat and they kind of got me a little bad spot up there up top. Now, you do not want to do this with a brand new mat. If your new mat is brand new, I will tell you to rub a little dirt on it, just a little bit, not a ton, before you stick your fabric with your backing straight down on top of that and make sure that your backing is well ironed onto it, okay? So there we go. I've got my fabrics on. We're ready to load it into the scan and cut. You want to make sure you have it between the grooves. Place your hand here. Mat loading is a very, very important part of your journey. Press the load button on the machine. Oh, I hit it twice. I was gonna go over there and show you what that looks like. We're gonna touch the load button on our machine, which is this one. And what did I do with the stylus, boys and girls? Aha. Now, background scanner. This machine will actually let you scan to create cut data or scan to scan your background. You can also scan to direct cut. We are going to use the background scan button to see what's on our mat. So we don't have to count grid squares. We can use our scraps. You can use things that have already been cut. And I have, I just have a double sided adhesive backing on mine. So there we go. And you can clearly see what's there. Let's, let me give you a little bit darker of a view because it looks like it's a little too light for you guys. Can you see what I've got going on? Take that and drop. Nope, it needs to be lighter again. We're just going to take our pieces and drag them onto the screen. If you have a hard time grabbing hold of one, because that little beak is teeny tiny. I'm going to use my arrow key in my edit menu and just use the arrows. I can hold that down and move it over to my black. And any questions so far, Barbara? Hey, Cindy, uh, we're getting, you're answering the questions as they're coming up really. And we're um, also responding in the comments. So okay, cool. we're good so far. So I went into, as I said, I went into edit. I used the, the select key to pick the piece I wanted to move. And then I used this arrow button to allow me to move it with whichever direction I needed it to go. So I've got my two pieces in there. I am ready to cut. So we're going to go ahead. Since we're okay, everything's set. We're good to go, right? So I'm going to touch okay. This is the operation selection menu. This is where you tell the machine, what do I want you to do today? So we're going to touch, please select, and we're going to tell it cut. Did y'all just hear my dog announcing her arrival into my room? <laughs> so <laughs> she shakes. She doesn't bark. She shakes. So I have selected cut because that's what we're planning on doing. And I always like to do a test cut. I cannot stress that enough because you want to make sure that it cuts all the way through your fabric. And that is sometimes if you've got a heavier fabric, you may need to add pressure. If you've got a really lightweight fabric, you may need to reduce your pressure. Right now, mine's on automatic. I want to make sure that half cut is off and it is. If it wasn't, I would touch my settings key and navigate to turn off half cut. But mine is off, so we're good to go in that area. So are you all ready to cut? 
let's see here. You want, I have, when you're using a backing, you want to use your black auto blade. Your fabric auto blade is for when you're cutting fabric without a backing. When you're cutting with a backing, you want the black auto blade in there. All right, are we ready? We're going to touch test and it will throw a test pattern up here. We can pick where we want to move it. I'm just going to use my arrows again to move it down. You all can see my little test circles that I've done. I personally choose a circle when I'm cutting fabric because it cuts every angle and a circle is the hardest thing to cut out of fabric. But you do have other options that you can select from in your test cut options here. We're ready to start. It's going to do my test cut. It's going to stop. I will lift up the corner of my fabric to make sure that it is cut cleanly. And then we'll go forth and multiply. All right, so let's see. Let, let me let you see. You can see that I have a little test circle. That's perfect. So I'm going to put my fabric back down on top of here. And we're going to finish cutting. So I'll just go ahead and let it start and we'll let it finish cutting while you guys can watch. All right, any questions so far? Um, we just have a few folks saying that they're... Um ready to upgrade to a new machine. So while it's cutting, we have a really great special on this particular model that you're using. And so we'll make you full screen and then we'll bring up the pricing for that. Um, this is the SDX 230D model. Uh, it has the blade sensor technology, which automatically reads the depth of your fabric, cuts, cuts up to three millimeter thickness, uh, it comes with a thin fabric auto blade. It's standalone, so no PC is required to use this machine. Um, you can do advanced editing with Canvas Workspace, which we're going to show a little later. It reads the PES, a PHC, and PHX files. Uh, tons of extras and included value in the box for only $8.99, and that's $150 per month for six months at 0% financing through Synchrony Financial. So don't miss out on that special that we have. And if you're interested in that, there's a shop specials link in the description of this video. All right, so I've lifted everything up and you can see my little pieces are cut really nicely. So I'm gonna lift them up with my spatula just so that I don't mess up any edges. Stretch my fabric, there we go. We're ready to go. Now, I am going to tell you, I am a firm believer of putting your dust cover back on your mat to make sure that it stays clean and you don't have any issues. All right. So now we're going to use a dirty fast frame. Uh, dirt, excuse me, a dirty sturdy frame. Easy hey, frame. Cindy. Easy frame. Cindy, I'm <laughs> yes. sorry to interrupt, but we did get three questions um, okay. while, <laughs> while we were... Um, going through that last portion. So the first one is from Barbara Jones and she asks, I have a question about the size applique pieces from a commercially made embroidery design. Is there a setting in the scan and cut? There is a setting that you can adjust. You can increase your uh, increase the size of it or you can add an offset and delete the original. I usually add an offset um, of about one to two millimeters. That will precisely make it larger all the way around. Okay. And the next question is from D. Clark. She asks, what backing do you use? I use the brother, um, what is it called? Applique fabric contact sheets. Okay. And April asks, how many different cutting blades are available for the Scan and Cut DX? We have three blades available. There is the black auto blade, which is what you use for most materials. There is the vinyl auto blade that you use for adhesive vinyls and heat transfer vinyls. And then there is the fabric auto blade for fabric that you cut without a backing. Perfect. And one last question from Beth Small. Can you change the size of the nest circle? Yes, you certainly can. All right. Thank you. 
Okay, guys, I'll, I'll double check that, but I'm pretty positive you can, but let me double check that just to make sure here in just a minute. All right, so we're using the Durkee Easy Frame. This is a seven piece set. Um, this is the base of it. All of the frames fit underneath the little knobs and you tighten them down. What this allows us to do is get into really small areas with an adhesive backing and you can get pretty much down to the bottom of the bag. I added my Cindy after I did my design, so I did not adjust my Flamingo into position, but we're gonna actually move it further down this time so you can see the full depth that this will allow you to go. That makes it to where you don't have to take apart the bag. That is the nice thing about a tubular frame machine. It lets you get into areas that you couldn't normally get into with a regular machine without taking things apart. So here's my bag. Let me show you the different sizes. So this is a three by four and that's the one I'm going to use. We have a two and a half by four. There's a two by four. So depending on what size your design is and how big your area that you can fit it into, there's a five by four, a seven by five, a round one and a radius frame. I don't remember the exact size of this one and I forgot to measure it but this one's great for use for doing hats. And then you have your eight by eight, which is the max field of the persona. Okay. And they make these for the other multi-needle machines for the multi-needle machines as well. So I actually keep mine in a bag that tells me that this is my persona set, just so I know which one's which. We're going to take this off flip it upside down and we are going to place our backing onto it. I'm using the brother adhesive stabilizer. It's a tear away adhesive and we're just going to put it in place. There you go. And then I'm going to take my bag here and I'm going to smush my bottom out to where I can get as far down here as I possibly can. So I've marked the center with a, heat away marking pen. There is a center notch here and I'm going to take that and make it in, basically take my zipper up to that center notch and smush my bag onto it. And now we're ready to put it onto the base frame. So loosen up your knobs. Have you ever tried to do this for a demo? <laughs> Slide it in and tighten the knobs back down and we're ready to go. So let's go to our persona. I have to switch out a camera because my switcher only has four cameras and you need to see me put this in. I remembered without a reminder. Aren't you proud of me, Barbara? Okay. So we have our persona up here. I'm going to take this, make sure that I've got the bag open. We're going to slide it up underneath here, make sure that the bag is down below and hook this in underneath the levers. It just snaps right into place. Pretty simple and easy, right? So now we're ready to align our design. Let's flip cameras. There we go. Stylus. Okay, there's one last thing I wanted to do to this and I have it directly here on the machine. If I had set this up in software, I could have adjusted it there. But since I did not set this up in software, I'm going to just add my basting stitch right here. And it will put a basting stitch around the entire design that will tack my bag down to my sticky stabilizer and allow me to work with that. I'm, there is on the machine itself, a little LED drop light. And I don't know if I can get you close enough to see that. Sorry to get you drunk, but let's see if we can show you that. Right. Oh, sorry. Right here, there is a little drop light. And let's see if I can get my finger underneath there. because I, I just can't get you to see that. I'm sorry, but there is a little LED drop light there. And that allows me to see where my design is actually located. I'm going to touch. I actually hit the wrong button. That was not what I wanted to do.
All right, I want to touch this one and touch the center. We're going to touch okay. So now let me put this back down on here. And I want center, center. So let's see here. We can move our design down. Actually, I need to move my design up. Go in the wrong direction. I'm trying to get my little red LED light in the center of the design. And since I said I pulled it off there, we're just going to move it just a little bit. Okay, so you can check the four points. And I highly suggest this when using a non-standard brother frame because it does not know what frame I have on there. So we're going to touch this little button right here again. Okay, and let me flip camera so you can see exactly what I'm doing. We will touch this to make sure that it's within, that it's not touching that metal frame back there. We're gonna to touch the bottom one. Make sure, oh, see, I'm too deep. So that is not good. I can feel that my dot is right there on that. That means we've made our design too big. That was my check. So let's go ahead and back up. We can actually adjust this design. So let's see here. Let's get rid of our basting stitch first of all. I didn't add all those words to mine. So let's see <laughs> here and delete. Yeah, it's the best way to learn. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's touch the flamingo part and let's resize that. But if you don't, I mean, you definitely, with a non-standard frame, you wanna make sure that you are testing and making sure that everything is fitting within that frame. All right, let's take this and shrink it and move it closer as well. We may have to put everything on one line. All right, we can touch okay. Let's touch embroidery again. Add our basting stitch back in and let's check and see where the bottom of our design is now. So we should be at bottom center and that is too far down. So let's move it up. Let's try top center. All right, I've made it small enough that it's going to fit in. And center, center. All right, so my center, center is actually gonna be a little off just because I cannot get that far down with this bag the way it is, but we're not far from it. The other thing that I check is, okay, am I straight on my left? Am I straight on my right? But if your top and bottom centers are usually straight, you're usually pretty good to go. Okay, so we are pretty square in there. And I am ready to take off. So the first thing it's gonna stitch is my basting stitch. Let's just press lock and press go. Well, it does help if you get your bobbin thread up. Oh, fiddle dee dee. I love it when we're live and everything can go wrong that, that can go wrong does go wrong. Let me make sure I've got bobbin thread in there. All right. We do have, while you're doing that, um, Cindy has actually wrote the playbook on the Brother Scan and Cut, and we have a conversation in the comments about that. We'll be talking, maybe we can get you to demonstrate it a little bit later, but um, yeah, Cindy writes the instructions for the scan and cut and more. So stay tuned for more on that. All right, let's put this again. Let's go forth and multiply one more time. There we go. Now it's caught. We have maximized the space that we could possibly use in this bag. Now, how do I change colors on this machine? Excellent question. 
since my feet are black and I had my, my pink flamingo color on, this is one of my favorite things about this machine. It has a built in thread cutter. You just Sydney, simply think that you could change your camera so that we can see the top part of the machine. Hold Before. on. I've changed the angle on that Barbara. So hold on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we changed it earlier. Let me see. Let's zoom out. See how far we can zoom out. We can actually raise it up. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So there's a thread cutter on this machine. You simply take the thread that was there, cut it off and pick the tail of the other one the one that's still attached to the machine and tie it together. Just tie you a little knot in there. Pretty much like you would do a serger if you've ever tied off for your serger, pretty much the same concept. Tie a knot, take it out of the threader down at the bottom. I can't zoom out any further, so hold on. You gotta be moved down. I can't have six cameras, sorry, I don't have that many in the house. <laughs> pull it down through, make sure it's not in the needle threader. When you see your black thread, you're going to press the needle threader button. I love that it has an automatic needle threader on it. Take it under the guide, up and around, pull the thread and press the button again. And we are threaded and ready to go. So now it's going to do my black. Let's go ahead and press lock and go. <clears throat> Once it gets up to our applique material piece, we will take it back over and press it. So let me turn on an iron so we can do that. And any questions while we're doing that? Um, none yet so far, Cindy, um, but why don't I just tell everybody about uh, this machine that we have. Um, we also have on this machine, it's Disney capable through iBroidery. Um, so if you wanted to do Disney designs on the Brother Persona PRS 100, you can. Um, it also is free motion quilting capable with the free motion kit that's optional. Um, you get six frames included with the machine. Um, and it's, it's just an amazing machine. Uh, our special on this is $49.99 with free shipping. That's only $4.17 per month for 12 months through synchrony financing. Um, on that machine. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, they have been very popular and we actually have some on the way. They're due this month in. So if you'd like to get your pre-order in, that's in the shop specials link in this video. All right. So now it's going to do our applique material stitch and I'm going to do it in the exact same color that I did the, um, that I'm going to do the covering stitch in. You don't have, there's no material, there's no color actually applique material. I always do it the same color that I'm going to do the finishing stitch on. Now I am actually going to cheat if that's okay with you all. So I can put both of my fabrics down at one, one time. I'll show you my cheat method. We're going to touch the plus minus key and we're going to go to our next applique material one. And the reason I can do this is because I know where these are going to land because I created the design. So we're going to lock it and go. And since my beak is black, I don't care if I stitch it in pink, the placement stitch. Before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and back this back up to where I need it to be. These are ways that you can kind of speed up your process if you need to. So we need to go back to where it would be tacking down my fabric, which is that one right there. So let's take this out and go back over to um, the pressing table. And I think I have it hot enough for us. Hey, Cindy, I'd like to just um, call, um, feature Maria on the screen. She says um, that she just purchased the Persona and Disney Scan and Cut from us during the pandemic. So thank you for your business, Maria and they are running it full time and so excited about this video. So that's really exciting. All right, so you wanna place your fabric within the placement stitch. And I have a little bitty iron that's good for this. It allows me to just tack that down a little bit. 
I'll give it a good press when we're actually done. And I'll tell you, sometimes I actually will use my glue stick and just slap it down there as well. You can see my marks are going away. So now we're going to put our beak down into its position. And if you want to know what yours is going to work, what yours is going to stitch like, I always suggest doing a sample on something that you don't care about first, just so you know how the design's going to stitch. It makes life a little easier and it lets you know whether you can skip a step, just like I did. Okay, so we're down and we're ready to go back to the machine. So let's put back on the machine. And we're about done with this, guys. Gonna slide it back in. Make sure it's under, make sure that the pouch is down below and we're ready to finish this up. So we're gonna lock it and go and it's going to finish up the applique. So the next step is the tack down stitch. And then the next stitch is a covering stitch for the flamingo part. It tells you what's happening. Just pay attention to your color tiles here. So as you can, every time it moves to another color, it's showing you up here the thumbnail of what it's going to stitch. So you can make an, have an idea of exactly what you're going to do. And it's, that makes life super simple, kind of mistake proof because I can see that the next color is applique material and you will remember that I fast forwarded to that step so I can skip that step this time around. It's not going to be necessary. There are tons of built-in designs to this machine and as Barbara mentioned it is embroidery compatible which means it can read it's the only tubular machine that we have that can read Disney designs. So you can actually put Disney on things that you want to put on, put it on. Let me let you watch it stitch here. What? Oh, wrong one. Boy, that's cock out as the day is long. <laughs> Cindy, that was so easy. And you're doing fantastic. Everyone's giving you a lot of love in the comment section. So, um, yeah, they just really love this and, and love that you're saying boys and girls it makes them feel young. That's <laughs> what one commenter said. <laughs> oh, boys and girls. Yeah, you know, it's kind of one of those things. I am a school teacher by training. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to get out of that. <laughs> All right. We're going to touch the plus minus sign because we're going to skip applique material and go to our tack down stitch. Because remember, I've already stitched that. We already have placed that fabric down because I checked my design before we actually stitched to make sure I could do that. All right. I'm going to tie off and just pull and change to my black color unless you all want a pink bill. And then we're through the magic of this machine. We're going to tell it we want it to finish up with all the same color because the rest of my design, rest of my design is going to actually be stitched black because we're on the beak and we can tell it don't stop anymore because the same color is going to be used for the rest of this design so here's the magic button for that and this is on many brother machines so look for this button right here that is a single color button and what it does is it tells the machine you don't need to stop anymore just go ahead and finish on to the end. And if you've got a design that finishes with multiple colors, that's really an easy way to save time for yourself, not having to come back and press the start button. Once you've done that, press lock and go, and it is going to finish up our embroidery design. Okay, so um, after this finish, Barbara, do you want me to go ahead and do um, Simply Applique while this is doing its thing? Yes, I think that would be great. Okay, I'm going to flip back over to the Scan and Cut so that you don't see me walk in the middle of the screen. 
and I'll change color, change uh, cameras here. Oh, actually, I do have six cameras in. <laughs> this one's the number six. All right. So, <laughs> any questions that we have that I didn't answer so far? Can you give us a little preview of the playbook? Um, you want me yeah. to show you a playbook? Yeah, the the scan and cut playbook that everyone's just raving about. We we do have that in the shop show specials. <laughs> All right, I can go get it too if if you, you can't find it. But um, <laughs> let's see. And everybody, on, oh, I, you know it is sitting on my desk. <laughs> sitting actually below my desk here. This is what it looks like. It comes with a ping pong activation code for the the one of the designs excuse me, one of the lessons that is in there actually uses this to create a project. There's also a lesson on how to activate the cards and those type of things. Um, it's all color. It tells you all about your settings, how to get things set up, all kinds of stuff. You know, what, what Scanda cut data is, what Scanda USB, what Scanda transfer to Canvas workspace. I try to walk you through pretty much every function on the machine. So, I mean, you get to try every step by step everything on here. And there's a there's a USB stick. Uh, let me let's pull that out because that tends to be the most confusing thing for people. By the way, I didn't pick the design. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, is it a credit card, Cindy, it's or a is credit it a card <laughs> style USB? And this little the, the side with a hole in it is a hinge. Pop that. There's the hinge stick it in the machine to use the files that are on it, the cut files, but to get the printable files, put it in your computer. This side goes into the USB slot. Okay. Oh, and there is a printable glossary that shows that talks about all of the different buttons that you have so that you know what those buttons do. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Hey, now, I just to let everyone know, um, on Facebook, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty. So I'm just going to ask um, if we can put the a URL to YouTube down there. And don't worry, we'll we'll uh, definitely, if it gets kicked off of Facebook, we'll upload it to Facebook later on today. So you will not miss a thing. Um, so, yeah. But it looks like the same amount of folks are watching. So I don't know. <laughs> we could be on Facebook. <laughs> Maybe they're just watching a blank screen. Who knows? I think. Oh, yeah. We're on the flamingo, the word flamingo now. So it's almost done. Oh, great. Um, so um, there's some other ways that we can do um, the applique through different programs. Did you want to talk a little bit about those? So yeah, to, let's talk today about Simply Applique. If you have BES4, you do not need Simply Applique because the same tools are built into BES4. But Simply Applique is a really good starter program if you're into appliques. And appliques are so easy and it's a, a nice way to do, especially baby designs. Um, it's a quick, easy method of getting embroidery out. It always looks lovely. You can use you know, whereas with thread, you can use variegated threads, but you can't get that special look that you can when you get that perfect fabric. And so being able to do that with your scan and cut and doing the appliques is amazing. And I have to say, the scan and cut saved my bacon more than one time because I am the queen of cutting through the garment. It never failed, especially if it was an order and I was trying to rush it out the door. I would snip something and it's like, and now I've got to do another one and that's just not good. And with the um, scan and cut, it's going to be precisely cut. You don't have the fuzzy sticking out. It just does a beautiful job. So let's talk about Simply Applique. And if you'll share my screen, I'll show you how I created my design. We'll start in Canvas Workspace where I got my actual shape. So right now it's in Simply Applique. So I'm going to go back to Canvas Workspace. Can you hear me over this no racket going on behind me? Yes, ma'am. I can okay. hear you. <laughs> so I searched for Flamingo. Imagine that. Press enter. 
And this is in the Canvas project. We are wor I'm working on the desktop application of Canvas Workspace. There is a web version and a desktop version, both for a Mac and a PC. I'm working on the PC version, but not, um, but not on the, I'm not on the website. So here's the rhinestone desk decorated flamingo brooch. We're going to click the flamingo. I don't need this part. I just wanted the shape, basic shape. And I only need one of those. So now I've got my shape. All right. So now we're going to go up to this, the application button, which is the little A at the top left. And we're going to say, oh, import. I hit the wrong top left. The, um, at the file pull down menu here and choose export transfer FCM file. And we want to export the FCM file because we are not sending this directly to our scanning cut. We are taking it into software to create an applique. So I'm going to export it and we will call it. Um, ba -bum -bum, what are we calling it? Where are my Facebook live files? Here we go. Flamingo. And we'll say save. And now let's go into our Simply Applique program. We are going to go up to the application button, which is the A, choose import FCM. And then let's choose Flamingo 2, because that's my FCM file that I just created, right? Now I cheated so that I could have my two parts. I zoomed in here. And you have little drawing tools that are available to you. I could have done this in Canvas Workspace, but I find it easier to draw in either Simply Applique or in BES4. I'm going to use my line drawing tool. If I need to do curves, hold down the control key and it will bend for you automatically. So we're going to come just trace around the beak that's here already. And going to click here at the right side and come in and click in the middle and then say, close my shape. We're going to select that piece that we just did and we are going to edit the shape and I'm going to make this one smooth. So it rounds that curve up. And if you need to make any final adjustments, you can. We good so far with this. That was simple. Now let's click on our flamingo shape and let's get rid of this part of the beak. So we're going to take that and we are just going to press delete on the keyboard. I basically I drew around those two, those edit squares down at the bottom. We're going to press delete. So now you see how I've got another beak piece. Let's add a point right there, move it up and press smooth. And it should be almost perfectly matched. Correct. So now let's pick this guy changes color. So now it shows I have two different pieces and we are going to make two different appliques. So in my sequence view window, I'm going to pick up the artwork piece. We're going to touch convert to applique. Voila, we have our first applique. We're going to do the same thing on the second artwork piece, convert to applique. So we have two separate appliques. Now, the setting that I changed to make it to where I didn't need to add any offset to my design was my placement offset. I made that 0.5. And if you look at this outer line right here, when I apply that, do you see how that line moved out towards the outer edge? That's exactly what I wanted to have happen. I'm going to do the same thing for the second piece. So now we're good. The last thing I want to do for this part of it is to right mouse click and say removed overlap stitches take this down to nothing because I don't want any stitches besides the running stitches to remain. And voila, we're ready. So how did I get my feet, Barbara? Oh, by the way, I should have resized this and I didn't, <laughs> but just so you know. I thought it was genius the way that you found the feet. So I went into my home tab and I chose add designs and let's come grab accents and let's find something that has feet like a bird. There we go. Here's us a bird. It's got some little feet. Let's click and add that in. Notice how I've got a bird with feet. So we're going to get rid of all parts of that bird by selecting them in our sequence view window and pressing delete on the keyboard. 
Now we want to find the feet. So I can tell that these are eye parts. And if you click on them, you'll notice they get highlighted over in the main design window. So there's all of those pieces. Let's just press delete to get rid of them. Then we're left with little dots. I could save one of those dots for our eye and I think I will. So we'll, we'll get rid of the rest of them. And let's change this one to a different color so it will break it to a different section. There we go. He's going to be a demon eyed person for right now, but it will just make life a little simpler for us. And let's move our feet down in here. I see I have a little tidbit of something here that I don't need. So there it is. Let's delete that. And I see one more, which is not there. Where is that one? It's going to be down here. There it is. Get rid of that. Move our eyeball into place. Oh, hello. Let's ungroup those. Ungroup. Now we should be able to move our eyeball into place. And we can make it whatever size we want it to be. We can make it a non-demonic eye by changing it to black. <laughs> but actually, let's leave it demonic for just a minute so we can easily drag our black feet up to sew first. And then we can change our demonic eye back to black. <laughs> Cindy, that is so funny. So uh, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, um, we did get back on. Um, so I'm sorry about that little technical difficulty uh, with Facebook, but you can rewatch this um, either through this video or if that doesn't work, we will repost the full recording for you. And that's your basic design. Now, if you didn't want to color code at the machine, which I didn't have to do, I did that for you to be able to show you how that works. What you can do since we created this applique in Simply Applique, we can press the scan and cut button on the tools tab. And you'll notice it gives you the two different pieces. They are the perfect size to cut. You can export that as an FCM and take it directly over to the scan and cut from Simply Applique. So you know it's going to be the perfect size, okay? There are tons of built-in appliques, and I'm going to pull one from the, the um, software. Let's just press new page here, add design, and let's choose add applique shapes. There is a little B that we're going to cut. Just check out all these little appliques here. So let's see here. What have we got? Where's my B? Did I pass him? No, there he is. He's cute. So we're just going to click on him and insert him into the design page. That puts him in at the default size. If I want it smaller, I can pull it in from the corners or I could have clicked and drag it in the same. Instead of clicking to put it at the default size, I can click and drag it to the size that I want it to be to insert the design. So it's up to you as to which you prefer. I always like to put it in at the default size first, so I know. But like I said, you can do it however you would like. So let's go and touch our tools tab. I'm going to click off of everything to deselect everything. So it only picks my applique parts. We're on the tools tab now, and we're going to press the scan and cut button. There we go. It has divided up our pieces for us. So let's grab a USB stick and put it into the machine, into my computer here. And I'm going to export this FCM. So we're going to go up to the application button here and choose export FCM file. If you have a different cutter that accepts an SVG, you could do that as well. But for now, I'm going to go to here and we're just going to call it B and save it. I would actually save my design as well. To, so do a file save as. And if I was planning on embroidering this, which we're not going to have time for today, I got to find my mouse. We'd call it B. And if we, if you want to come back and mess with it later, you would type in, save the BRF file. That allows you to come back and adjust it later as an outline format. If you don't care about that, simply save it to your machine format and it saves out in a variety of machine formats down here. Press save. 
and you can then take that to your machine. So let's take our FCM file over to our scan and cut and let's cut this time. Yes, I could change the shape of the body of that if I had wanted to. You want me to show you that real quick before we go over there? So if I wanted my B to be adjusted, I can select the part here on the screen, choose edit shape, and I could actually adjust the shape of the B. Once I adjust it, right mouse click and my that part is adjusted. You'd have to do these little pieces by themselves. But there you go. So you do have that option of adjusting the shapes of things. All right, any questions? Um, one question from Tina Tremblay about the Simply Applique software is, is it only for the scan and cut? No. <laughs> as I said, you can export your artwork out as an SVG or an FCM file. Most digital cutters use an S SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic, in their software program. But this is actually an embroidery design, an embroidery software. So it is basically an embroidery software that does work with our scan and cut machines. Very nice. It has built in fonts. There are, I don't remember exactly how many, but you have built in applique fonts. And I think 11, maybe 11 built in appliques and maybe eight built in standard fonts. Very nice. So we do need to, um, we're at the hour now. We're going to go over a little bit, if that's okay with everybody. But don't forget, we are giving away a $100 allbrands.com e-gift card at the end of this broadcast. So Diane wants to know how I would use the, the Wi-Fi. I would save this out onto my computer instead of my USB. Or I, if I still had my USB stick in my computer, that would have been fine too. Let's just save this as F, uh, B. And Canvas Workspace would be where I would go to wirelessly send it. So let's go to Canvas Workspace and choose new. And we would import from my computer. Let's go to, um, I just put it right there, didn't I? Where did I put that? <laughs> well, I'll be darned. I swear I just put it in a, all right, let's see where I put it. Cancel. While you're looking for that, Cindy, we did have a question from R. Murray who's interested in the Simply Applique. We have that in the shop specials uh, link for this video. And there's two options for this software. You can ask for the um, shippable version, which it's free shipping, but it takes, um, you know, a few days and a, and a box to get to you. Or you can choose the download version, which takes only like 24 hours uh, or less to for that to be emailed over to you. So and there's my B. I'm going to export transfer and we'll transfer via the internet. But I will tell you, mine is not connected here right now. It's going to tell me that it's not. Oh, it, it's not going to find this machine. It's going to find my 225. My 225 is connected to my Canvas workspace. So that is, you. Want, we will not see this on my machine. All right. You ready to flip over to the scan and cut? Sure. I guess I do have to change cameras. Otherwise, you're not going to see the scan and cut. You're going to see me at my desk. All right. Now we see the scan and cut. All right. So at our scan and cut, we're just going to touch home. It's asking if we want to delete the patterns. It's just clearing our screen. Touch OK. We are going to retrieve the data. If I was connected wirelessly, you can see I'm not. So this machine is not connected to my Canvas account. I'm going to touch USB. And here's my BFCM. This time we're going to cut fabric without a backing because that's one of the biggest questions I get. How do you cut fabric without a backing? And it's really not that hard, guys, but it does take a little practice. And we're not actually going to stitch this one because we don't have time, but this way you can understand what the process is. So to go. 
Fabric Mac is, is a gold color and it matches your Fabric Auto Blade, which is a gold color. Okay, everybody can see that. This is a fine, delicate blade that should, that cuts, uh, it just is for delicate fabrics. So you're not really, you're not using this to cut with a backing. Always keep this one covered with a dust cover. If you don't, you will be severely upset with yourself because stuff sticks to this like Chuck. <laughs> I have stiffened my fabric. I have used Sullivan's fabric stabilizer. Um, I also use Tyrael Magic. I, there are many things that you can do. I will tell you plain old just vanilla spray starch, not strong enough. So there's my fabrics. I've laid them down on my mat and you can see that they are securely attached to it. Oh, that is the key. All right. So now let's go load our mat. Wrong one. There we go. Once again, I cannot stress this enough. So you'll hear me say it over and over and over again. Make sure it's in the grooves, put your hand on top of it and press the load button on your machine. Once it's loaded, you're golden. Now, I did not show anybody how to put the thing in. There's a flat side, put the flat side to the back, the brother logo facing front and push, push the lever down. Okay, we brought up our design. Let's touch OK and do a background scan. This time I've got really light fabric. So I'm going to show you how to change that the density of the image again. And I've lost my stylus. Somewhere in this room is a stylus waiting and hiding from me. So I can't see my white fabric. I can see my yellow easily, but my white is hiding from me. So settings, touch the darkened image. And there you go. Now I can see my white fabric and I can bring everything over to where it has a place to be cut on my fabric. We're going to touch OK. Tell it what we are going to do. So we're going to do the operation select menu and we are going to tell it to cut. The beauty of this machine is that it automatically detects the fat, whatever thickness that you're doing. So once again, I'm going to add a test cut. And I don't want to waste a ton of fabric. So I'm going to take this up and put it in a different location so that I know that it's on my media. Touch OK. And we're going to touch start. And it's going to start doing its thing. The first thing it does is engage the blade. And then the next thing it does is test the thickness of the fabric. And then it will cut the circle. There we go. I have a beautifully cut circle. There's my test circle. Let's go ahead and touch start and it's going to cut the rest of our fabric. Cindy, we got uh, questions from folks watching if you can purchase the scan and cut playbook online. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, it's on the shop specials link. It's called the Brothers CADX Playbook One. It's only $149.99 with free shipping in the continental USA. Oh, I did them backwards. Oh, well, we're going to have a white bee and yellow wings. <laughs> but the point of the matter is for you to see that you can cut fabric without a backing. As long as you have it nicely stiffened, lift it off with your spatula, off your fabric mat so that you don't injure the edges of your fabric. And depending on your tolerance for fray will depend on which method you use. Um, Sullivan's is a totally no, excuse me. Sullivan's is a low fray. Tyrell Magic is a no fray. Sullivan's I can... Spray it on and be ready to go in about three minutes. Tyrell Magic, I tend to have to wait longer. Okay. And that's how you cut fabric with your scan and cut without a backing. Y'all want to see the finished design? 
now that the flamingo is done? Oh, yes, we'd love to. All right, let's see. Camera. <clears throat> All right, guys, so we are finished. All we have to do is basically take it off of our backing and you can, uh, basically it tears off your backing. Take your basting stitch out and you're ready to go. Boy, that's some good sticky I've got today. <laughs> there you go. And now you it's so yeah. great. So normally like to hoop a bag like that on a flatbed machine would be very difficult. But since you use the Durkee seven in one frame set for the persona, it, it really does. So Make much a huge difference. Hold on. One more, one more let's show. And if so that teeny tiny bag was impressive, but you can also do the style bag just by slipping it in once again. Pick the one that fits and slide it in. And then basically this goes underneath your tubular arm. So easy. And for those of you six and 10 needle folks, this is that's available for your machines as well. A lot of people are saying cute, love it, cute bag, love it, so cute. Love my scan and cut. Yeah. <laughs> but, so um uh, don't forget everybody, we're going to be doing our $100 allbrands.com e-gift card giveaway soon. So get your likes, comments, and subscribes in, and ask us questions now that we have Cindy on the screen. Cindy, let's see that project a little closer because it was so cute. Okay. <laughs> That's Flamingo. I love it. So, Absolutely love it. Quick, easy project done. What I mean, I, it, basically, if I had done this without trying to demo everything, I'd be done in 10 minutes. Yeah. All right. So let's answer some questions real quick. Okay. Uh, okay. Brenda asks, what do you clean your mat with? Well, the official, <laughs> the official thing in the manual is, um, in the official brother manual is to use tweezers to pick it off. <laughs> we don't do that. Um, you can use a baby wipe without alcohol. You can, I actually have gotten into the habit of just wet, dampening a wash, uh, just dampening a paper towel, wiping it down and then going back over with another damp paper towel, letting it air dry. And that tends to get all of my lint off. Yeah. Oh, let's see. D-A-K Amethyst says, uh, Terial Magic. Uh, she says radial, but I think she meant to say Terial Magic. Yeah. Uh, works great on preventing puckers on shirts. So yeah, that's cool. There's there's tons of uses for that. And if you're, I mean, say you're wanting to do a, um, a linen without having a ton of stabilizer behind it, it actually stabilizes the embroidery. And I tend, like I said, I tend to use Sullivan's for both, both tri ticks, tricks. Um, just that's because it's faster for me and I, I'm all about quick sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, we're not getting a lot of questions. So Cindy, you must have explained things very well. We're getting a lot of compliments uh, to you um, directly because you did such a wonderful job. So thank you for that. Um, okay, so right before we do our, our giveaway, I do wanna bring up the, the two specials that we have going on. And then I have another included bonus for you. So the first thing that we're gonna bring in is the persona. Uh, machine price. So this is it. Um, I don't know if you could switch your camera to show the machine. Is that possible? Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh I gotta, okay. I got to switch cameras. So <laughs> She's so good, isn't she? Oh my goodness. So that's the scan and cut. We're going to go to the person. Okay. Oh, All right. right. Scan and cut. Here we go. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, perfect. This is what we meant to show. So this, <laughs> this is that the was camera number five. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the machines are a lot easier to use than the cameras, guys. And this is the machine that Cindy was using uh, today. Um, what are your favorite things about this machine, Cindy? 
I love that LED drop light. I know that they couldn't really see a, that really well, but it makes aligning things so easy. I love that it has a needle threader on board. I love that the scissors are built into it. I wish my 10 needle had that up there at the top where you, you're changing threads. I would love my 10 needle to have that. Um, the basting stitch, being able to edit on screen. There's just so much about this machine. Um, it, it's a nice little workhorse, guys. Yeah, I love that it has the bobbin winder integrated in the machine. That's something that the six and ten needles don't have. It's it's Disney capable through iBroidery. And if you purchase that free motion kit, optional accessory, then um, you can do free motion quilting on this machine. Yes. Yeah. And there Our, is a, that and I will actually say that that is probably the more economical route to get the flat table for the machine. Oh yeah. So I have a little extra bonus for everyone. We actually, I fished this out of our um, newsletter. We have a coupon um, that is an extended Memorial Day special. I'll bring that on the screen. Uh, it's a hundred dollars off, off order of a thousand dollars or more. So that coupon code is Memorial Day 100 that expires on the 9th and you can use that online if you wish to pre-order the persona which is coming in in a few weeks uh, from Brother. So we'll have that in very soon and be able to process all of those orders. So yeah, all right, how about the scan and cut? Let's talk about the particular scan and cut that you were using today. So you want a different screen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, all right, so this is actually the SDX 230D model. Um, there's a 230DX model that's more, but this one, we just have an amazing deal on it. So what's your favorite features about this machine, Cindy? You know, that auto blade technology is just amazing. That, the fact that it reads the PES files, if I forget to do it on my software and I want to do it in the machine, it is so simple. It, um, it's just a really versatile machine. You can cut fabric, you can cut heat transfer vinyls, you can cut adhesive vinyls, you can cut cork. Most materials, three millimeters or less. You can cut puffy foam. Uh, there's so much that you can cut with it. It's amazing. And it yeah. automatically detects how deep that blade needs to cut. I do not have to think about it. There, it does not require me to have software. There's free software if I want to use it, but it doesn't require me to do that. I can take that with me anywhere and make right directly on the machine. Wonderful. And I love that it reads the PES formats that we just showed today um, and the PHC and P, you know, those. Yep. <laughs> PHC, PHX and PES and, and nope, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. It will so all brands be has a, a unique special that we have that I'm going to show on the screen. So with this machine, just from all brands, um, that's outside of what's included in the box. We are including for a limited time, the fabric mat, the roll feeder that cuts six feet of a vinyl roll, uh, a roll of vinyl, the project book and more. Now the project book is different from the playbook. So if you wanted to take advantage of that, definitely add that one on to your purchase. And I'm not very good at math, but that might bring it up to that 1000 special uh, with that coupon. So let's bring up that coupon one more time. If you add the playbook, then that will qualify for this, right? Is my math correct on that? You're asking me to so. do math at this time of day. <laughs> <laughs> no math for me. All right, so everybody, I hope that this was helpful. Please, please take advantage of those special offers. So, so. all right, now we're going to get ready to do, to do our $100 allbrands.com e-gift card giveaway. So, I, and thank you so much, Cindy. And thank you everyone for watching. Yes, for indeed. Sticking through, um, even though we had a few little hiccups today. Um, <laughs>
So yeah. Oh, and Cindy, you have a live show every Tuesday at 3.30? 3.30 Central. Um, and where, yeah. where can they see you there? They can see me on Cynthia's Embroidery Facebook page. I think it's at Cynthia's Embroidery One, technically. Um, we do software. So we, I cover brother software, tips and tricks. We do Canvas Workspace. We do PE Design. We do BES4, whatever, whenever the mood strikes me and whatever a question I get. So if somebody, I try to answer customer questions. So if somebody asks me a question during the week, that tends to be what pops on. Yeah. So. All right. So I'm going to ask Callie to pick a random like, comment, share, and subscriber. From the comments, drum roll, please, Brenda. Great. Congratulations, Brenda. Please email me at events at allbrands.com to claim your prize. You are a lucky duck today. <laughs> or a lucky duck. <laughs> and um, I'm so excited that we're going to be at Houston Quilt Festival this year. Um, please don't miss out on that. Uh, that's in October and Cindy's going to be there with us. And guess what? Brent from Durkee Hoops is going to be with us there as well. We have a lot of fun, exciting things coming up. So stay tuned for more. Those easy frames are just amazing. And Brent is a doll. He is so sweet. Yes. Um, and those are the best deals of the year that you see at Houston Quilt Fest. Yeah, really. <laughs> it really, really is. Really. Everyone knows. Everyone waits for Houston. <laughs> so, yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Next week, we're going to have Deborah Jones on the show. Um, and then we're going to have Becky Thompson from Power Tools with Thread and Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz back again. And then, Cindy, we're going to have you back again. Yes, so, indeed. Yes. <laughs> with Brent from Dorky. Yep. So uh, we, we're really looking forward to that. And thank you so much for sharing your time with us today and letting us um, play in your studio and learn. Thanks for having me. And thanks guys for coming and sh sharing with us. It just is, I mean, it's fun. Yeah. We like to share what we like to do. <laughs> All right, everybody tuning out. Have a great day. Bye.